Do you ever have a project where fate seems to stop you at every step for no other reason than because you're not prepared? Well, that is the story of what happened to me while mounting the ways on the Gingri lathe bed. First off, if you've made it this far, uh, I commend you for the uh, work and the hours of hand scraping the bed flat. My arms are still tired and sore, but they didn't fall off. Uh, if you're not building along and you just like to see me struggle to do simple things, well, welcome back to another episode of that. When I cast this bed in ZA12, I got countless people asking if that metal is good enough to handle the, the wear and tear of the carriage going back and forth. Okay, well, probably not countless, but I didn't count them, so close enough? Uh, well, the answer is probably not. Uh, but it doesn't have to. Gingery specs out a big plate of steel to put on top of it, and that will be the ways. I ordered that plate along with a bunch of other steel parts that you'll see in the future. The last time I tried to build this lathe, like four or five years ago. It's been a while, I think I got them from metal supermarkets online. I could be wrong. Gingery wants you to attach the ways to the bed through four four holes, four threaded rods with nuts, uh, through these big slots that are in the in the bed that I didn't make. But since I started working on this, this particular plate of steel the first time around years ago, we're gonna cut to old me to talk about the layout. That's enough math. Screw precision. Uh, let's get the drill. Opening to the page that I've dog-eared over, wherever it is. Here it is. Oh, that's not it. The ways. So that's this thing. This is a sheet of uh, or a plate. It's 24 by three inches by a quarter inch. Uh, you know it's about the right size because this is the carriage that rides back and forth on it. But this attaches to the bed. And the way the book here shows it is with four, well, looks like two bolts, two threaded rod with nuts or maybe four threaded rod, a couple shorter than the others. Give you a good look at that. So the bed, as you can see, has four openings. In that you kind of have these four threaded rods. They go through through the bed through the, uh, the ways here, and it kind of clamps it all together. On the end, these things are the are like the, the feet. I've noticed a few other people doing this kind of do it a little different way. One of them that I noticed is maker size. I'll, I'll put a picture, his lathe on the screen now, if I can figure that out on my new editing software, and you'll see he doesn't have four big bolts. He uses instead uh, a bunch of countersunk screws, and I kind of like that better. I did also buy some some countersunk things here. They're not very beefy, not as beefy as the threaded rod. Countersunk, you can see, and brass, obviously, because brass is cooler looking. Literally no reason other than that. I bought that many of them, uh, 16. 16 of these, four openings in the bed. I'm pointing at that you can't see because it's out of frame. So that means four of these per opening. So I'm gonna arrange them two by two in a group of four, four of them across. In the middle of those four things, I am gonna put the threaded rod. So I wanna get, before I start any of that, what? One of those is shorter than the other one. I, I feel I feel cheated, cheated by, by myself actually, because I'm the one who bagged these at, at the hardware store. Whoops, well, pay attention. I gotta go back there, I guess, anyway. So before we get to much else, I'm going to lay out where I want these holes to go. So placing this on here, you can't see. Come on, cameraman. Placing it down, you'll see the, the thing here is uh, not as wide as the ways. That's a good thing. You want it to hang over on each side to kind of try to get an idea of how crooked I have this thing sitting right now. Okay, so that's roughly uh, the space of the uh, top of the bed. So there's a hollow, I'll just draw here. There's actually a hollow like this inside the bed because it's got walls. Now do I want these to fall here or do I want them to fall here? I don't know. I kind of want them apart a bit. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. I don't know, leave in the comments. I say leave it in the comments, but like, by the time we're watching this, too late. Well, WD-40 is a fantastic solvent. So, how are we gonna lay these out? Obviously, we need to do some, some rulering and some math. Isn't it fun to be back in the workshop? All this tedium and maths. Why do British people put an S on that? Now this is 24 inches long, but let's say um, I want to have the sides in, like the first screws on the end, in one inch from the end. So that takes our 24 inch span and takes uh, one inch off each side, so that drops us down to 22 inches. These are, this we're going on center, so 22 inches on center from the far left to the far right. 
Now I got 16 of these, right? Two in two rows, one on this side, one on this side. So we have uh, eight per side, eight per side to spread out over 22 inches. So what does that do for math? Doesn't go in evenly. Save me calculator, 2.75, two and three quarter inch on center for the whole span will give me eight holes over 28, 22 inches. Okay, that's actually, that's actually pretty easy. And I know what you're thinking. Paul, you've never been one for, for any sort of precision before. Well, it's a lathe. It's supposed to be precise. Also, I'm gonna try from uh, this point on to be a little less crap in the stuff that I make. 2.75, and I know they're not in like a precise line. I'll get to that. Just roughing things out. And this tape measure is not working very well. So we're gonna ignore that. We got a hair under two inches. I need more subdivisions. About two inches side to side. So we wanna put our bolts, what do you think? Three eighths in from the side? I mean, that makes sense, right? Three eighths in. Then the head has some thickness. Yeah, that gives enough and then this this end will go through uh, and, and it will work. Hang on, is this is this actually brass or is this just, I have to know this. No, no, it's actually brass. Nice. So what was I talking about just now? All right, three eighths, three eighths in. Write it on the bench so I don't forget. Sorry if this is boring, but you know, sometimes making stuff can be. And I don't have an anecdote to fill every possible gap I mean, of course I can talk about random crap. I'm just going to give myself a little scratch mark. There's the center. So I was planning on doing this series. I was like, I finished the, the uh, heat treat oven and then I was gonna shift to this and I was gonna do lathe video after lathe video until it's done. So looking at the nature of this lathe project, I'm not entirely sure that's feasible depending on, you know, how I'm feeling, the weather, what my horoscope says, all that sort of important information. I know what you're thinking. Don't discriminate against people who believe in horoscopes. You know what? I don't take any fortune telling even if it's in a newspaper. I mean, supposedly the weatherman has science behind it and he's not always right. So right now I'm using this scribe here to mark center line. And by all means, if anyone knows a quicker way of doing this, let me know in the comments. I mean, it'll be too late for me to, to jump on and do it because this is all done by the time you see the video. So here's the thing. I did 22 inches span divided by eight. I shouldn't have done eight. I should have done, uh, I should have taken into consideration that the zero point is also a pair. So N minus one, three, I shouldn't have done two and three quarters. I should have done three point one, four, two, eight, five, seven, one, four, two, eight. Crap. Okay, so that's a problem. Even in precision, I was precisely wrong. And you know, because this thing shakes so much, there, there's like a lot of wobble in the bushings on this drill press. It's really hard to like center anything. So like when I get it centered and then I try to like crank down on it, it, it just starts wobbling. So perhaps all the care I put into uh, wasn't wasn't so great. Could have used that time more wisely. I'm gonna, I'm gonna crank the volume back up so you can hear the chattering. Let me know if this sounds as terrible to you as it does to me. Seriously, if Chatter had a megaphone. Hello? Drill press? Sure, why doesn't all my equipment just break right now? So that's why there's a couple of holes already in the thing. I'm gonna use the same layout that old me uh, didn't actually lay out, like he said. Careless jerk. The previous holes were drilled out with a 3 16th inch bit. And that's the perfect size for the bolts to go through. They're not loose, uh, but you also can't thread them. But that's okay, you don't want threads in the ways. You want the threads in the bed. I basically just finished drilling out the rest of them, and then I countersunk them with that bit I showed you. Just deep enough that the head of the screw goes below the surface. That way the carriage goes right over the top of the bolts, and I don't have another problem that I will shamelessly blame on past me being a careless jerk. This is where I ran into problem number one. Not only did I buy 16 bolts, not in the same length, I laid out 18 holes, so that's a problem, uh, but I also went back to the hardware store at some point and bought another batch of bolts, and they're different. They're a different thread. I don't have enough of any one to actually make this thing work. And if I don't know what size I'm using, I really shouldn't be drilling holes and stuff, right? Oh, and the hardware store was closed because I do all this work at like 11 o'clock at night. 
Oh goody. So I went to the hardware store the next day and got more than 20 of the exact same bolt, so I didn't have to worry about this again. And that's a good thing, because I thought I got the same kind of bolt as one of those two. No, nope, it was a third different one. Because why would I take one along as reference, right? That's just crazy talk. Okay, so I got the bolts this time. That night, I went back into the shop, dug through my big metric tap and die set, and wouldn't you know it, I don't have that one. Nor do I have the drill bit close enough to the same size where you can actually tap the hole. And yes, the hardware store is closed again. So the next day, I went back to the hardware store, bought the right tap and the right drill bit. I took a bolt along this time to make sure I got the right one. See? Learning. And when I went back to the shop that night, I couldn't find this chuck key that needs to be in this slot and clicked over to turn the thing on. I couldn't tighten the thing either, but you know, vice grips exist. Could not do it, so I spent the whole night looking for this stupid thing that falls out all the time. I'm not bitter. Who said that? So the next night, I managed to suppress the urge to just burn everything to the ground, and I uh, started working. I drilled all the holes in the ways, 3 16th inch, and then countersunk them, like I mentioned. Now the holes in the bed, I drill smaller because I want to tap those ones. And they actually have to line up exactly in the middle of the larger hole. So when I put the bolt in, it's not off center, right? Well, I wasn't thinking too much. So what I did, I took the ways, I clamped them in the right spot on top of the bed. That's like centered left to right. And I took the bit that I used to drill the hole through the ways. And I just kind of goosed a little bit and put like a divot in the dead center right below the holes in the ways. I, I really only did this to a few of them. And then I drilled those holes with the right bit to tap. It's a number 25. And then I tapped those holes. And then I used that setup to screw the ways down to the bed. So now it's secure because clamps are... Mm. Now go back to the beginning. Put the 3 16 inch bit in there. Kind of put like a divot at the bottom of all the holes. Then put the number 25 bit back in there and drill all the holes. And wouldn't you know it, the drill bit uh, broke. See, the zinc stuff has a problem. It seems to me it gums up a little bit on the bits. And when you're tapping it, you'll see this later, it kind of can start jamming. And if that happens, back it out, clean the tap off, more WD-40, try again. But when you're using the drill press, it, it doesn't have feelings, it doesn't know. So it just, it, it responds to gumming up by just snapping the bit off. Fortunately for me, it did this at the very last hole right as it pushed through the bottom of the bed. So when the bit broke, it fell down, not plugging a hole. It fell down through the bottom onto the bench. Finally a bit of luck, huh? But it was particularly risky on the center two holes. Now, old me, said he was going to do 16 holes and line them up on the spacing underneath those braces. Well, old me was also an idiot and put two dead center right into the middle brace. So that was a particularly difficult one to drill. I basically had to drill up and down, cleaning out the bit several times until it was definitely deep enough, and then, you know, four or five times with a tap to make sure it didn't plug up, didn't jam up, because if I broke the one and only tap I had in that hole in the middle of the night again, I just would have melted the entire thing with a giant torch. So anyway, violent urge to burn everything aside, there's a trick to tapping with this stuff. This zinc stuff's kind of gummy, okay? It's it's not as gummy as like aluminum, but it's also not as not gummy as steel. So you run the tap in, all the way, pull it out, clean it off. I had to run the tap through like two, three more times, just to get rid of all the gunk in the threads. You might want to try that. If you've done it right, when you go to put the ways back on, all the screws will just thread in nice. Now I did it, so I didn't do it all right, and a few of the screws didn't go in all the way. Uh, the solution to that is to just run the tap through it again with the ways on. It should not be tough. It should be easy. You're not cutting new threads, okay? You're just cleaning up the ones that are there. And then the bolts will go right in. Easy peasy, but not so easy peasy because all this drilling and tapping has led to burrs on the top of the bed and the bottom of the ways where they come together. I just took the countersink bit, put it in the drill, and just kind of tapped, you know, the surfaces of all the holes. That seemed to work. Maybe that was really careless? I don't know. But if it's stupid and it works, uh, it's not very stupid, is it? I mean, yes, it can be, but I got away with it. I'm feeling lucky. Now clean up all the metal shavings everywhere, put it back, screw it all down nice and pretty, and uh, finally, it's done. It only took five years and like five trips to the hardware store to drill a few holes in this thing. I feel oddly both accomplished and terrible at this at the same time. Next time, we'll be doing the castings for the feet, and uh, it's going to be a bit crazy. Wow, my vocal cords made it to the end of that. Throat cold suck. I ate like an entire value-sized bag of cough drops before doing this. And uh, it didn't help, not even a little bit.